Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome back to Whispering Hope Daily Lesson Study Review. Here with us, we are studying this week the hour of his judgment. And our topic for this morning is the cleansing of the sanctuary. But before we go into our discussion, we'll ask Elder Tyrell to welcome God's presence in our midst, and Elder Jarvis will read for us our memory text. Let us pray. Almighty and ever, willing, ever living God, we give you thanks, O oh Father, for your love, your kindness, and your tender mercies toward us. As we participate in this discussion, Lord, give us the thoughts, give us the ideas, give us the words to express them, dear Lord, and may those listening, may they be blessed by something that is said and discussed here. And in the end, dear Lord, may we all be drawn closer to your kingdom, is my prayer for Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. Our memory text is Romans chapter 13, verses 11 and 12. Okay, our uh, memory text is Romans 13, verses 11 and 12. I'm reading from James verse And that in the time that now is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is your salvation nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of it. Amen. Now looking at our text, what are some insights that you get from our memory text this week? We'll begin with Elder Tyrell and then Elder Jarvis will conclude for us. And that knowing the time, that now is high time to awake from our sleep, Let's pause here for a minute. We cannot afford to waste time, um, as the text says, sleeping as we await for the coming of our Lord. We must be ever, ever vigilant. We must be ever alert. We, we, we must not only get ready, but we must stay ready. We must maintain a state of readiness. And the verse 12 continues, the night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Now, it, it's the second coming is right upon us. Time is not on our side. So we are expected to maintain that connection with God. And so when he comes to claim his own, none of us will be left out. For me, this reminds me of um, after Jesus gave such uh, exposition, on last day events in Matthew 24, he begins Matthew 25 by speaking about the, the kingdom of God is like unto ten virgins. Now, we know and in that story, now, when they awoke from slumber, there were some who were ready and there were some who were not. And here is the, the Apostle Paul to the Romans speaking that we need to wake up now. We need to become, we need to be aware of our surroundings, aware of our situation, aware of our circumstance, and knowing the time, as he indicated, and it is high time, because the, it's time to put off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. So it's really an indication, it's a call to action that we are here seeing the Apostle Paul bring to our attention. Amen. So we're going to turn to Revelation chapter 14 and verse 7. And I will read that for you. It says, Sing with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. And worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. Now, our question here to begin will begin with Elder Jarvis. Will the judgment be before Christ comes? According to the text we just read, when will this judgment begin? And then Elder Tyrell will come right after. Um, yes, this judgment is, the process is in play right now. It began in 1844, where the prophet Daniel indicated after 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. The cleansing of the sanctuary is the process of judgment. 
It's if we remember what happened in the sanctuary in the desert, the sanctuary services and ceremonies, the Day of Atonement, the Yom Kippur, as it is known in Hebrew, that the cleansing of sanctuary process on that day, persons are supposed to um, afflict themselves, making sure that all their sins were forgiven. Uh, they have confessed all of their sins. They didn't have anything against their name because the sanctuary is being cleansed of everything that has been placed there. And at the antitypical time now, that's what's happening. And the time of judgment will come before Jesus comes. And we will know that the judgment has passed because there's going to be what we call seven last plagues. And there's going to be the loosing of the four winds of the earth and all of these things that are going to happen after judgment already closed. Now the text is quite clear. It is written in the present tense that the judgment is come. And the judgment is here, it's ongoing. And yes, the judge as as the Javis just alluded, the judgment is ongoing and when Christ comes, that would be the pronouncement. He who is holy, let him be holy still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. So yes, the judgment is a is an ongoing process at this time. Amen. So we're going to ask Elder Tyrell to turn to Daniel chapter 8, verse 14. Daniel chapter 8, verse 14. And our question states, what specific timetable does Daniel give us regarding the cleansing of the sanctuary? And then after Elder Tyrell reads, Elder Jarvis will answer and then Elder Tyrell will answer subsequently. As it says, and he said unto me, unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Now, those of us who study the word would recall the reference of a day for a year. And, and so, as, as the sanctuary is being cleansed, as the judgment is ongoing, you know, we cannot tell at what point it will end. We were not given privilege to that information. But we know it began and we know it's ongoing. Hence, it gives us fear warning to prepare ourselves as the sanctuary goes into this, this cleaning process that each of us would come out, if I should use the term, with flying colors, with shining ready to, to, to be received by your Lord when he comes. Well, there, is, there are some things that were kept from us. And the word of God encouraged us to study, to show ourselves approved, a work minded and not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We are going through as Jesus puts it, the time of deception, the time of trouble, time where issues are going to be are going to be visible, and we are to lean on him and trust in his word. The the whole issue of when it's going to happen, how we, if we're going to know exactly when it will, that has not been revealed. But we have some indicators. We have in Testimonies to the Church, Volume 5, where it is indicated that at, at least we will know when judgment moves to the living, because that would be indicated by the passing of Sunday observance laws. But the probation would close, no one really knows. It is just for us to be in readiness for when that time comes, or we should die before that time comes. Amen. So we have a few more texts. 
We're going to turn to Lax Ella Jarvis to turn to Daniel 8, 27. And Ella Tibrill, again, Daniel chapter 9, verses 21 and 22. So Ella Jarvis, Daniel 8, 20, 27. And Ella Tibrill, Daniel 9, 21 and 22. And our questions here are, what was Daniel's response to the vision of the 2300 days and what what was God's response to him so what was Daniel's response to the vision of the 2300 days and what was God's response to him okay Daniel 8 and verse 27 says and I Daniel fed and was sick certain days afterwards I rose up and did the king's business and I was astonished at the vision but none understood it. 9 verses 21 and 22 says, Yea, whilst I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision, at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation, and he informed me, and talked with me, and I said, O Daniel, I am now come forth to give this skill and understanding. If we, well, if we understand how God functions, God doesn't give snippets, bits and pieces of information. So if, if we recall, if you read the prophetic writer in, in the book, Patriarchs and Prophets, when God took Moses up on the mountain, where he was to put him to sleep and showed him a vis the vision of the future. God showed Moses from his time all the way to the end of time, Jesus is coming. And it's, this, it's the same principle here applies. And, and we can see it in the narrative of Daniel chapter 8, that Daniel got a vision seeing from his time all the way down to the end of time. So imagine Daniel seeing airplanes flying in the air. He may have seen spaceships, um, these tall skyscrapers. Um, Dan Daniel has seen a myriad of images that he just couldn't figure out. He see God's people being persecuted by this power. And he was just distraught, mesmerized. Daniel indicated that he fainted. His brain started to overheat. This is a dramatic um, concept. And he just couldn't work out all that he saw. And he was sick certain days. And he said afterwards he rose up, but he was just as baffled as he was after he got the vision. He just didn't understand it. As was alluded to earlier, Daniel, Daniel referred to him being informed by, by the angel. As the angel spoke, he understood that the end is approaching. But in verse 22, he says, And he informed me and talked with me, and said, Oh, Daniel, I am now come forth to give this skill and understanding. The angel is clear to Daniel that he was God's messenger. And he came to help him to understand the message so that he could pass on to others. And as he passed it on, the message will continue to flow throughout the ends of time. And it, it was clear then that when God responded by letting him know, he, he sent his angel to help him to understand the vision, to give him skill and understanding. So here was Daniel's willingness to learn and God's willingness to share and teach. Amen. So now we're going to look at Daniel chapter, Daniel chapter 9, verses 22 to 27, Daniel chapter 9, verses 22 to 
20, yes, no, 24 to 27, Daniel 9, 24 to 27, and it says, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandments to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks and three scores and two weeks. Yeah, the Messiah, the prince, shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall, even in troublous times. And after three scores and two weeks, shall the Messiah be cut off and not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with a flood. And unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. And the final verse says, And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. He shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate and our question here is what is the significance of that the death of jesus has revealed in the text that we just read is directly linked to the judgment in daniel 8 14. so why is it significant that the death of jesus was revealed that as revealed in daniel 9 24 to 27 is directly linked to the judgment in Daniel 8, 14. We begin with Elder Tyrell and then Elder Jarvis will wrap up this question for us. Select, select quickly on Daniel 8, 14. And he said unto me, unto 2,300 2, days shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Okay. Once the sanctuary has been cleansed, judgment is closed. And, and so, the, the the reference here is is does have a clear connection between this verse in chapter in chapter eight and the, the verses twenty four to twenty seven in chapter twenty seven. The judgment is is gone going. Once it is finished, that is it is the end, and we are reminded. About you know, he who's filthy, let him filthy still. There's no continuity after that. So, yes, there's a direct connection between these two texts concerning the closing of probation and the coming of Christ. The 70 weeks are determined. That was the a specific period that God showed Daniel that was specific to the Jews. Now, what is the pertinence of this? It goes right back to Genesis 3 and verse 15, where the promised Messiah was first announced. And the promise was made to the serpent that he shall crush your head and you shall bruise his heel. And God, has, God was indicating to Daniel that this time period was specifically for the Jews and the coming of the Messiah to fulfill that promise that God made in the beginning. Jesus would come to pay the price for sin. Jesus would come to vindicate the Godhead of the charges that Satan made. Jesus would come to make that sacrifice that only God could make and fulfill that portion of the saving of mankind that had to come before the judgment begins. Now, here is this small period, and it speaks to the Messiah coming, being cut off, 
and um, he also destroying the sanctuary system, all of those things will be done away with. And it is evident to Daniel and to the Jews who would see it from thence to be able to determine when the Messiah would come. But just as, you know, the devil gets in itself into everything, at the time when Jesus was to come, there was within the, the religious establishment of Jerusalem, there was a saying which said, which goes, curse is he who counts the days of Daniel, you know, so that persons could remain in ignorance. It, it, it was de determined that you shouldn't be the devil got them to a place where they're ignoring what God gave to Daniel about the 70 weeks. Curse is he who count the days of Daniel. So it's really an issue where the process of salvation is to happen. The Messiah was to come. The sacrifice, his sacrifice was to be made. And then in the process that God has established after that will come the judgment. But it is in the full line of God's re redemption plan for man that this 490 day, 90 years or 70 weeks is set aside here in Daniel 9, 24 to 27. So, uh, let's see well again, you begin for us. This is our final question, a follow-up to our last question. What great truth is taught here by this link? That's a question. The great truth is the coming of Christ and the preparation thereof. There's an ongoing process of cleansing, judgment, where the sheep, if you will, will be set aside from the goats. And we now have an opportunity. We who study the word have an opportunity, not only just to get ready, but to maintain that state of readiness. Because when Christ comes and he makes up that pronouncement, that is it. It's not changeable. So the connection I see here, or the truth actually, is the coming of Christ and how we prepare for that grand occasion. Well, as was promised by God to Amos, he that he will do nothing but reveal his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. Jesus said in, in John that I tell you before it comes to pass that when it comes to pass, you might believe. Uh, Isaiah 46, 9 and 10, that he is the ancient, he is the, the one from himself who will declare his work. And as he does so, you, we are going to be able to know that he is God. The whole revelation process is for us to understand what God is doing, when he's doing it, to the, and make sure that we are on the right side when the time comes. Amen, amen. So we're going to go right to our takeaways. We're going to begin with Elder Jarvis. And this time around, we'll end with Elder Tyrrell. What are your takeaways or what is your takeaway from our lesson today? Well, for me, my takeaway is God is faithful and he is deliberate. He is meticulous. He's orderly and organized. And through his methodology, we are able to see his love fully expressed. Here we are speaking about in Daniel's day, which was from uh, up until 538, 539, where these, all these years, we're talking about almost 3,000 years, God has been in full control God has been in revelation mode, saying and revealing to us what he's going to do in our time. And if that's not trustworthy, then 
I don't know what is trustworthy. God is God. He revealed himself and he indicates to the prophet Ezekiel, show the things that are to come that they may know that you are God. And he has revealed himself to be God because he has shown exactly what is to come. The judgment is final. And I have a responsibility and an obligation, if you will, to prepare for the judgment and the coming of Christ. Now is the time of preparation as this cleansing process is ongoing. When I fail as I go through life, as I expect I would, I must be quick to recognize my failures and ask God to lift me up and prepare me for the time when he shall come to claim his own. So that is my takeaway from this study this morning. That we must recognize there's an ongoing judgment process. We are all involved. And at the end of it, I want to be saved in God's kingdom. Amen, amen. And that has brought us to the end of our discussion this morning. We are grateful that you could have joined us. And we look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning when our topic will be the 2300 days at the end time. Share the link with a family. Share the link with a friend. Join us as we continue to study together.